It's time to fabric up the fuselage. I have all the interior components mounted now and I won't need to get into the empennage until after final assembly. In this episode, I'll go over covering the flight controls and the fuselage. Some time ago, while I was still living in Salt Lake, I covered all the flight controls. And since I hadn't done any fabric work since A&P school back in the 80s, I thought I'd start out with the small projects before moving on to the wings or fuselage. Better to make mistakes on small things instead of the big ones. I chose the steward system over other systems, like polyfiber or dopes, for a few good reasons. Primarily though, it's the fumes. Yuck. MEK is nasty stuff, as the fumes are pretty noxious. And not just from breathing it, but from skin exposure, the chemical builds up in your body over the years and causes brain damage. At minimum, it requires a full respirator and butyl gloves. But the steward system is water-based and doesn't need any protection from fumes or skin exposure. Everybody in the whole house is happy. And the documentation from the steward manual and videos are top-notch. <laughs> I love it that at their booth, they hand out paint thinner for you to drink. It's water, folks. Covering the tail feathers, flaps, and ailerons was pretty straightforward. The instructional videos and procedures manual from Stewart are excellent and walk you step-by-step step through the process. I also attended a workshop at Oshkosh one year, which was a really good introduction. Working on a flap here, Step one was to rough up the aluminum surface with a scotch bite pad so the eco bond glue has something to bite onto. Then of course the residue needs to be cleaned off with acetone and any sharp protrusions that could tear the fabric, especially from rivet stems, were knocked down with a Dremel or orbital sander. The Rayon's build manual calls for applying an anti-chafe tape to the sharp edges of each rib. And I learned at the Stewart workshop that hockey stick grip tape works excellent for this. I found multiple widths and colors at my local sporting goods store. So after all the prep work, it's then time to brush on the glue and let it dry, making sure to apply plenty of glue without too much of a mess. Not that I'm a fan of buying any actual tools at Harbor Freight, especially for use on aircraft, I discovered these cheap brushes to use for the glue, which I could then throw away after each use. Cleaning a single brush each time was just not worth the effort, but because there were still plenty of loose bristles, these still needed trimming, as I needed to produce a solid edge when applying the reinforcement tapes. While the glue was still a little sticky, the fabric was carefully cut to shape while a hobby iron was used to tack down the edges around the structure. After the entire side is tacked in place, Glue is brushed on, soaking through the fabric, adhering to the glue underneath. And the process is repeated with the fabric on the other side of the flap. But before applying glue over the second side edge, I used the iron to tighten the fabric over the ribs. I then measured and marked a line to where I needed to only apply the glue under where the edge tape will be applied. Applying the edge tape was rather intricate as it involved many precise cuts and sometimes stretching the fabric for transitions around the corners. The iron was used during this process to tack down and smooth out the fabric, thus preventing any fraying or lifting the fabric tape edges, which would definitely be seen in the finished product. Once I was happy with how the edge tape laid down, the final coat of glue was applied. But before it started to dry, I had to quickly wipe off any excess that hadn't soaked into the fabric. The last step was to make one more pass with the iron, as the wiping and drying process tends to fray the pinked edges a little. For the detail work, the small hobby iron features a digital temperature controller built into the handle. But for shrinking the big fabric panels, I used a ski wax iron, as Stuart recommended. But the temperature dial is not calibrated and it's also in Celsius. So each time I change the iron temperature, which was actually quite often, I used a digital thermometer to set it accurately. Covering the tail surfaces, flaps, and ailerons provided good practice before tackling the fuselage and wings. And I'm glad I did, as it's always better to learn the process and make your mistakes on the little things first. I finished covering the controls nearly two years ago while I still lived in Salt Lake, 
but since the move to Texas, they've been wrapped up in storage along with the wings that still need to be covered. Now it's on to covering the fuselage. I still had the frame on the rotisserie as it would make it so much easier during the covering process. After scuffing the powder coating, the first step was to apply a layer of glue on the frame tubing. Then the first big panel to go on was the bottom. giving it a little tug while tacking down the edges. Then trimming the excess and gluing the fabric around the tubes. Glue having set, the big iron comes out to shrink the fabric to a tautness like the face of a drum. The side sheets followed, which also covered the vertical stabilizer and top of the fuselage. The same process was used on the sides, tacking the edges, trimming the excess fabric, and tautening with the big iron. Next was installing all the reinforcement patches, inspection rings, grommets, and finishing tapes. Not the most fun part of the job, as it was very repetitive and seemed to take forever. Luckily, the RAND's build manual had lots of diagrams about exactly where to place the reinforcement patches and inspection rings. When I was gearing up for the fabric work, I bought these rotary pinking shears, as they are highly recommended. Stewart even sells them on their website. I was initially excited to start using these, especially when they needed a pinked edge around a patch or a doily but I found them to be somewhat awkward to manage. They didn't completely cut through all the fibers, leaving a somewhat frayed edge, and it was difficult to see where they were going, as the wheel housing blocked the cutting edge, resulting in a somewhat wobbly cut when trying to cut on the straight. And also, my hand would cramp up pretty quickly. I found using a high-quality pair of pinking shears would leave a much cleaner edge, and I had a lot more control when rounding a corner. Back to the patches, Sometimes I made a paper template, but then other times I just went by the dimensions. It was helpful to first coat the cut lines with a 50-50 mixture of EcoBond glue and distilled water, and let dry before actually cutting the fabric. The edges came out much crisper and not frayed at all. And there were lots of reinforcement patches, inspection rings, and grommets to make and glue down sometimes with a plastic ring sandwiched between the fabric layers. And finally, the edge finishing tapes were applied over all the patches and where the underlying tubing came in contact with the fabric. This offered double layer protection from chafing. And there was so much ironing down the edges of all the patches and tapes because the drying glue tends to raise the edges slightly, which would definitely be noticeable through the final paint. Gotta keep everything smooth. Very often, when the EcoBond glue isn't completely dry yet, the soft glue builds up on the irons. I found this neat little trick to remove the glue. Stewart Systems recommends using a sanding belt cleaning stick as a glue eraser. I tried it, it's tedious, and takes a lot of effort to completely remove the glue buildup. They also recommended using an adhesive decal remover in a drill if there is any large surface. I bought one of these on a whim a long time ago from Aircraft Spruce and man does it do the trick. In no time that iron is clean again and ready to go. This really saves a lot of time and keeps the glue from balling up when ironing a patch. The absolute last step was to remove all the excess glue from the powder coated frame. It rubs off pretty easy with just your fingers. It reminds me of rubber cement. Having completed covering the fuselage, I realized pretty quickly during the process that it was a tedious endeavor. The nature of the task required cutting patches with repeated gluing and ironing, 
all while working in spurts to let the glue dry. Looking back to my build log, that single task in the build manual took 130 hours. I really feel that just covering the whole fuselage twice would have been much cleaner, easier, and faster than dealing with all the reinforcement patches and tapes. But my effort is to try to follow the RAND's build manual without modification, and I just don't know enough about covering airplanes to deviate from the plans. Now that the fuselage is covered, it's time to work on the firewall forward components. I'll talk about that in my next video.